Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are back here in Zoodesia Zoo. I am so sorry that I've been gone the last day and it, I was gone earlier this week too and, and I miss Zoodesia so much. I have just been way majorly sick. So I'm really glad to be back and I thought we would pick some delicious papaya to eat something very, very healthy. Maybe even snag something in exchange for Zookeeper experience points so that we would be able to have some delicious peafowl garden delicacies from their little peafowl garden cafes do eat on our way to the safari zone and that is going to be very exciting because the safari zone is not yet officially a part of our zoo but it is going to be it is down here past the fungi forest and we are going oh let's climb up here and pick this papaya first and we are going to go exploring over there my friends oh papaya where do you think you're going where do you think you're going? That is the wrong side of the fence. Oh, these papaya are so much fun. And I've actually only had papaya once in real life and I did not like it. So let me know if you guys have had papaya and you like it or what you did with it. Because I just cut mine open and ate some and I was like, yeah, this doesn't taste very good. Also, what is this chest full of? Uh, oh, there's a glow shroom in here. <gasps> I love glow shrooms. And then there's a whole bunch of mossy things, balls of moss. There is just a giant pile. I must have bought an entire thing of iron ore down here. Well then, we'll have to clean this up later. All right, good to know, good to know. But yeah, we are gonna work our way over to the safari area today, if we're lucky. I have no idea how far without being able to see it on the map, and I don't know why it took me so long to go ahead and just get a new map. Um, I have no idea how far away it is from the rest of the zoo. So I'm thinking we're gonna have to have some sort of really awesome train system. And I swear the train system was what my sister was more obsessed with when we were kids. When we would go to zoos, she would wanna ride on the trams or things like that. And I have a cousin who's kind of the same way. If she goes somewhere, whoops, oh no, no, come back papaya. You're going to end up as food for the fishing buns and the carrot fish if you keep that up. I wonder if fishing buns like more tropical. <gasps> I wonder if there is a papaya fish, like something a little bit more tropical than a carrot fish that the fishing buns could snack on. Well, I'll have to remember that for the future. But yeah, when we were little and we used to go to zoos, I know that going on the trams or the railways or the uh, car uh, carnivals, those are what my sister and one of my brothers always was more obsessed with than the actual animals. And that's the same thing for one of my cousins, my little cousins, who's a lot younger than me. And so I think it's only fitting in their honor, if nothing else, I should make sure that we have some sort of really cool tram in our world in the future. Oh boy. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this. Plus it would be really easy if we could actually like just ride a little monorail around this entire area, or it would be really fun just to be able to make sure the teleporters are in place and zip, 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 zip all over to each area. All right. But that being said, let's go ahead and trade in these papaya to our awesome friend Keeper Mitchie over here. Oh, and you guys may notice I finally moved in some... Oh, I just love making bird feathers, uh, bird feather jewelry, so this is a dream job for me. I'm so glad, Amy! But yeah, I picked up a couple more gold ingots from the Prince of Peafowl and his consort, who is, like, flapping around here somewhere. And that's going to be very important because I have so little... Oh, yes, there's another one! Thank you so much, Your Highness! Because I don't have very much gold. I have so little gold, and I'm going to need so much of it. I actually dreamed about this today. I'm not even joking. I dreamed about how much gold I'm going to need to cure all my zombies. And that tomorrow, we might try to organize how many zombies we have. We might try to figure out how much gold we have. And we might have to start working on that underground room where we are going to have the gold trees that we need to pick from pretty regularly. Really. So, hmm. All right, Keeper Mitchy. Oh, and that's why I was going to tell you guys. I have put in some table and chairs. And there's also some mushrooms and glow rocks in here. Glowing mushrooms and glowing rocks in here now. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, Keeper Mitchy, I need to. Well, actually, no, you're the one I need to trade to. That's right. So you can trade the papaya to her. And that way we can get quite a bit of zookeeper experience. Yay! No, she took my apple too. That was my apple. And we can also trade the lettuce. That's why I gathered it from that little garden. And now if we come out here, there's a dodo ATM waiting for us by the noisy hummingbirds. I think you're going to come back in a few days, you guys, and find that both hummingbirds... Oh my gosh, that sound. That both the hummingbirds and the... Um, oh my gosh, they're so noisy. And the peafowl have gotten a lot quieter because whenever I go to peafowl, they hardly ever make these kinds of noises and I've never heard a hummingbird make that noise. The only hummingbird noises I've ever heard is when they clack their beaks against each other to fight. All right, so let's come on over here to Amy and let's go ahead and pick out some delicious food. Hmm. 
There's peach lily tea. There's the frozen pea file espresso. We'll get a couple of those because they give you night vision and that's always useful. Ooh, a mushroom jungle risotto sounds amazing right now. I want some two-tone lettuce wraps. Um, toasted coconut? Maybe some toasted coconut for dessert. And then what else? We still have a little bit more money. Should I spin on some? Let's get some blossom bloom tea. I don't think I've ever had blossom bloom tea before. Oh, and now it's raining. So I think drinking the Sakura tea would be kind of fun. All right, let's go ahead and feed our puppies. And then rain or not, that just adds to the adventure, you guys. And like I said, don't worry. The peafowl are probably going to be silent next time you come back. All right, there we go. And we're going to keep moving. So let's go check on our big giant fish aquarium that we've worked on for so long and so hard on. dun 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 I love this area. Hello, little hummingbirds. You guys, there's more of you than usual. I think you've been having babies. I need to offer you guys to other other people who may need hummingbirds. Off you go. There you go, little one. All right. And how's the egg research do center doing? I haven't been over here in a while. Where are all my fish? Did every single fish I have die? I added so many fish in here. Don't tell me. Was it the tree? Did they all suffocate under the tree? Well, guys, this is a little bit of a Debbie Downer, but it seems that all of the fish... Unless there's some sort of fish-eating creature who has snuck its way into my tank. It seems all of the fish have somehow been eaten straight out of my tank or, or they died from my tank. The way it's set up. I might have to get rid of that big tree. I love that big tree too, but I think it has caused the irreparable death of, like, geez, dozens of fish. What? I guess this is why you need to make sure you hire, like, aquarium experts. So, well, gosh darn it. I'm going to have to start putting fish back in here and then check and see what happens to them when they when they die and and revive them that's that's really not so cool you guys all of our fish there's not a single little fin nowhere there's not a single fin anywhere oh my gosh i wonder how that happened well we'll check in on that this is supposed to be one of our um aquatic aquariums for asian river so our asian river aquarium filled with asian river fish and we need to put the fish back in and i'm going to be making posters that will probably span these walls to try to explain some about the unique species that actually live inside of the asian rivers so we can really look into what they're doing and what they're up to down here is eventually going to become uh, areas for the bats and over here is going to become like this really fun cafe and you guys had some great ideas for making rock candy which i thought was so cool so we're going to figure out something we can make into rock candy and we'll sell a bunch of rock candy and other kind of like rock themed foods kind of like we just picked up some really delicious foods from the peafowl garden that kind of have a theme to them but yeah we'll look over the rock candy foods and i just uh, all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna eat my my little um frozen peafowl espresso then and sort of fuss about. Oh, it didn't give me. Oh, it, the whole peafowl espresso. I ate both of them. Apparently, you eat them really quickly. I guess I'll have some toasted coconut, but at least I can see into. Um, at least I can see pretty well into here now. And I can confirm, my friends, there is not a single surviving fish. Fooey! All right, well, we'll take care of that in the future. All right, and then here's the Egg Research Center. For those of you guys who don't know it, it's the Egg Gathering Grove, the Oology Research, which is the study of eggs. And let's come in and see how everybody's doing in here. Cracker Jack is doing just fine. All the pigeons are doing just fine. Our little happy singing uh, singing bird's doing just fine. Where's my lyre bird? Little blue bird, you're all recovered. Where'd the lyre bird go, huh? And here are my blaze chickens. I need to get more blaze rods and help them have more babies because we're running low on blaze chickens. All right, let's see. Yep, good, 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 good. Everybody, everybody good back here, Flair? All right, good. Everybody's good here. Blaze powder is so useful for so many things, but especially for getting eggs to hatch. So there we go. All right, so you guys are all doing okay. I still need to expand the center and maybe, ooh, maybe. <gasps> Wouldn't it be amazing if we managed to get our hands on some sort of like cloud phoenix egg? Oh, I would study the thing so hard. That would be so cool. All right, well, let's keep moving. We've got places to go, things to do, uh, mushrooms to collect, and in this case, uh, we are moving on. And we'll kind of take a peek. Is the rain stopped? I was kind of hoping the rain would stop if we stayed out there, but apparently not. That's fine. We're in a rainforest. This happens. 
But here we go. So we have finally reached Educator William. And it is about time you've met him. He has actually been here for like well over a month now. I think he's been here almost since the beginning of the new year. And I just haven't had time to come back and say hello to Educator William. Did you know tigers are good swimmers? They will often cool off in lakes and ponds. Although they, uh, although they are so strong, tigers rely on their powerful teeth to hunt. Injured tigers missing teeth often starve to death or rely on hunting livestock. Thank you so much, Educator William. And he's actually going to be changed up a little bit so that you can come over here and you can read any of the facts about the South Chinese tiger that we happen to have right here at his little desk. So you can go ahead and flip through all of the facts. You can learn about the subspecies of the South Chinese tiger. You can learn how uh, a lot of people worry that they're pretty much functionally extinct because there's only a few of them left in captivity but they've got captive programs ash get out of ash oh my gosh i do not need you going in and antagonizing the tigers ash alia you sit you're a good girl ash and now he's trying to hide in the cherry so i can't make him sit ash all right alia sit alia alia sit alia sit she's like no okay alia there we go sit ash come here ash I'm trying to show everybody the awesomeness that are our tigers. All right, where'd he go now? Aha, there he is. All right, sit, Ash, good boy. All right, but yeah, our beautiful South Chinese tiger exhibit. There were two tigers in here just not a moment ago, so I have no idea. Maybe the other one's inside. Oh, there it is. There we go, blending in. And as you guys point out, and don't worry, I know this is true, white tigers are really not a thing in the wild. They are a result of inbreeding, and so it's not good to support like organizations that support the breeding of white tigers. That's no-no. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that here in the world of Minecraft. So we've got these two, and I don't know. Do you guys think they should have cubs? Because I really like the ideas that we've been coming up with. Oh, did you know that tigers are the biggest of the big cats? Yes, thank you, William. That is so cool. They really are. They're huge. If you compare how big tigers can get to other big cats, it's quite startling because I didn't realize just how much bigger a tiger could be than, say, a jaguar or a cheetah or even the lion. Like, I guess I always thought the lion was going to be the biggest of the big cats. But no, a tiger can really, they can be gigantic. They really can. But this is going to be fun. So we're still working on things for poor William. I don't want to leave him out in the rain. We're still going to try building like this little shack right here where maybe you can do with some sort of games to win some tiger plushies or other tiger paraphernalia or even these little educational books. Right now, William is protecting them, so he has set up to trade for them. So he'll tell you all about the South Chinese tiger, their ecology and their diet, and the geography of where you can find them, their breeding and cubs, uh, their population currently, any interesting facts about them or notable like tigers of history. Uh, he'll also have these little books to tell you about. And then you can come over here and you can actually swap out what book is in the center and then you can come and read on the, read them so south chinese tiger breeding many tiger species are able to breed year-round although november seems the most frequent breeding period the male and female will court by howling and growling at one another usually started by the male they move around uh smelling purring and rubbing against one another at times even grooming after mating the male leaves the female to raise the young on her own after 16 weeks the cubs are born in a den usually three to six cubs are born per litter although very few of those if any will survive their first years they are born blind and very small and Anywhere from 1.5 to 3.5 pounds or 780 to 1600 mil or grams. Hello, hello, William. And rely on their mother's milk for the first eight weeks of life. Um, let's see. At six months, tiger cubs begin learning how to hunt. Afterward, they stay with their mother. William, it's really, it's awkward trying to read with somebody like staring at me. All right. At six months, tiger cubs begin. <laughs> William, why is that making me so startled? Okay, uh, probably because I'm not used to having people in the zoo. I need to get more people in the zoo. That is definitely something we're going to make happen. I even want to start trying to invite guests over to the zoo, so it should be pretty cool. All right. At six months, tiger cubs be begin to learn how to hunt. Afterward, they stay with their mother for anywhere from one and a half to two years. Tiger cubs are often killed by other predators or may starve to death or become too weak to survive if there is not enough food available. Tiger cubs must learn to hunt from their mothers. And I thought that was really cool when I was doing the research on it. The mother, like our beautiful Amber here, will actually go through and have to teach their cubs all sorts of different hunting moves and stalking moves and how to take 
down their prey and how to kill it. There's a big element of instinct, but there's a lot that a good hunter who has experience and tigers do learn experience when they hunt can pass off to her young. So I really thought that was pretty fun. All right, Ash, all right, let's get out of the rain for just a minute. I'm so sorry, Educator William. William is an intern, and William, you're going to get this area totally tripped out. Here, I'm going to, here, I'm going to start, I'm going to clear the grass. Look, we've got this started. Clearing the grass. I'm even going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to clear this spot. Um, I'll even break this. Ooh, a lot of kiwi. I love kiwi. Get these gardens cleared out of the way. I want him to know I'm serious. And not just because it's my name, but because I am going to come over and we are going to clear this little spot. We're going to make it really super duper nice. Um, should I make that little pond like a feature somehow? It's kind of big. Let's do this. Oops. But yeah, we're going to clear this area and we are going to turn it into a really nice little like tiger cabana somehow, some way. And then we'll be able to make it super nice. Do do do. Because I really, I need to figure out how to make mini games somehow in our world. Because I would really love to make some cute mini games where people could come over and they could win the tiger plushies somehow. There we go. What do you think about that, William? Whoops. Apparently I took out too much. All right. But yeah, this is going to be a really cute little stand. I hate it when I get rained on all night. Oh, oh, do I have a bed in here? I think I have a bed in here. Hang on. <gasps> yes. All right. Back to bed we go. Nobody else is in the world right now. Ash, Alia, I would have done that so much sooner if I had remembered that I had a bed in my little hidden, hidden zookeeper uh, supply station. That's awesome. All right, see, the sun is out. You're no longer having to like get rained on, William. I feel better for that. And we have it set up so that this is going to become the uh, tiger stall. I think the, the like the bottom of it will probably end up being like the little game area, like the little mini game spot. And then the top of it might be like a little reading cafe, a little relaxing reading cafe that could connect up with the observation platform. That would be really cool. All right, well, I'll see you later, William. He's got a lot to tell you. <laughs> oh, um, welcome to the South Chinese Tiger Exhibit. Now you can actually see me now that it's not raining, right? But yeah, he's got a lot to tell you guys, and we can come over maybe on some of those days where I plan on streaming to just walk around the zoo and kind of show you guys uh, the world and do some reading on all of the creatures that are here. Then we'll come back and we will learn more about the South Chinese Tiger. I also need to set up things so you guys can learn about these amazing creatures. Hello, my beautiful aviary of awesomeness. Still one of my favorite places that we have ever worked on. All of our Gouldian finches, the kiwis. Oh, here's a, an egg. It's a kiwi egg. Just kind of laying around here. Here's the parrots. Oh my goodness. Here's more eggs. This is another kiwi egg. It is. It is another kiwi egg. All right, puppies, be careful. Man, we've had so many adventures down this little ravine, too. I'm glad we left most of it alone, like a natural resource. All right. Hello, didgeridoo. How are you doing? Are there more eggs? Ash, there you are. All right, we're, we're gently collecting eggs for just a minute here. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, big, beautiful birds. I can't wait to have a whole bunch of really big pictures that can show you guys the real life equivalent of what these birds are because there are some fantastic birds out there. And for you guys in Australia, because I know I have a lot of Australian viewers, do you guys have any owls that you're like really enchanted with? Any owls you think are just like the coolest thing ever? Because this is so fun. And I love this little hidden spot that the birds have to come in if they want to do like a sort of a ground nest. Lots of owls lately. We must have had a lot of owl babies. Not so many... Not so many parrots as usual, so, hmm. No, well, they're around, they're around. And personally, I think we need more Gouldian finches. But that's probably because I am obsessed with my Gouldian finches. I love Gouldian finches. So we might try hatching the Gouldian finch eggs really quickly. See, I've only seen, like, maybe five Gouldian finches. We need, we need a bazillion. They like being in a big flock. Okay, they're mostly over here, I will admit that. But still. Hi, guys! How are you doing? All the fun color morphs of Gouldian Finch. Okay, let's see if we get a baby out of this. All right. Oh, and there's a deer nearby, huh? All right. And then, let's see, baby? Nope. 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 Dang it. All right. Well, no Gouldian Finch baby this time, but that's okay. And the aviary is as amazing as usual. And I always have to remember, actually, that might be a good place to start, you guys. Let's go across, because the aviary has... Bye, little parrot. The aviary actually goes across here. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. This path will take you out to another set of doors. 
that I never use. They're probably covered in cobwebs because I forget about them so much. And they take you, do do do. They take you vaguely, sort of direct, like to a cliffside. No, they don't take you vaguely to a cliffside. They take you right to a cliffside that will hopefully lead us a little bit closer to the area that we're gonna go. Jeez, I feel like I've gotten nothing done today because I got distracted, as usual. But that's okay, because we're just going to have a good time adventuring in our zoo. And let's get out the glorious grafter and see if we can make the tiniest bit of headway. Oh, there we go. There we go. Cleared one tree out. Cleared two trees out. All right. Wow. I think I took out one of the big trees by accident, but I can see now. <laughs> And it leads you to a cliffside and we might have to choose if we're going to dismantle the cliffside or if we are going to plant on top of the cliff or like go through the cliffside kind of cave style so that we can come over. All right, there we go. So much stuff everywhere. Sorry about this tree. I didn't mean to cause such a such a ruckus. And then it will lead us out here. And now we are finally on our way, my friends, and we will continue the adventure tomorrow to see where the safari area is and get a good idea for how we are going to start connecting up our whole zoo. And oh my goodness, I think this jungle extends a little bit further than I remembered. <laughs> but yeah, we will continue to explore the jungle tomorrow on our Saturday special, so you know it's gonna happen. And we'll also swing by the tree of, oh wow, it's very pretty up here. Oh my gosh, where's the bugs? Okay, there's a bug somewhere nearby me. Um, oh, there it goes, a little beautiful bumblebee. Well, that's just fine. But yeah, we will continue to explore the jungle and on our way home we will swing by the Tree of Transformation and then we will go home and we will deal with the issue. Is that the Tree of Illumination? No, I don't think so. We'll deal with what we need to do for the zombies of Zomberry Village and also what we're going to do for our giraffes. I need to go. I've heard I need to feed my giraffes apples and then really good things will happen. But we'll have to see what happens if we feed the giraffes apples and we will have to see if we can find a perfect area to give them as their new home and think up a lot of creatures that we can put here in the jungle i'm thinking asian elephants um and like sloth bears just to begin with sun bears just to begin with um that we can add here in our world so wow all right some jungle adventures tomorrow i'll see you guys then Bye bye